A kingly beast strides into the sky in the late winter and spring, Leo the Lion. Leo is another ancient constellation. It is listed as a lion in its modern form in Mul Apin, a Babylonian tablet which is one of the most ancient surviving star catalogs. The brightest star in Leo is Regulus. Appropriately for the brightest star of a lion, Regulus has long been associated with royalty. Mul Apin lists Regulus as Lugal, meaning king, and the word Regulus is also Latin for the little king. In the ancient Babylonian epic of Gilgamesh, one of the oldest surviving written stories, Leo represents Humbaba. Humbaba is a fire-breathing lion with an armored hide. He had been set by the god Enlil as the guardian of the cedar forest. When the hero King Gilgamesh was contemplating his mortality, he decided to try to establish himself as a legend who would be remembered long after his death. He decided that the best first step towards that would be to slay the mighty Humbaba. Gilgamesh's best friend was the wild man, Enkidu. Enkidu knew of the terrible danger of battling Humbaba, and so Enkidu asked Gilgamesh not to try. But Gilgamesh refused to be dissuaded, and Enkidu was not about to let his friend battle Humbaba alone. Before they left, Gilgamesh sacrificed two goats to the sun god Shamash. He tearfully begged Shamash for aid in creating a legend that would outlast him. Shamash was moved and agreed to give Gilgamesh his blessing. It was a long journey from Gilgamesh's home to the cedar forest. Both Gilgamesh and Enkidu nearly turned back, but Shamash sent Gilgamesh dreams that they would be successful. Eventually, the two reached the cedar forest and were awed by the beauty of its immense trees. When they reached the abode of Humbaba, Humbaba leapt out at them. The two friends were in danger of being overpowered when Gilgamesh cried out to Shamash. In response, the sun god sent a powerful wind that pinned down Humbaba, allowing Gilgamesh to defeat him. Humbaba begged Gilgamesh for mercy, promising that he would be Gilgamesh's friend and servant if he were allowed to live. But Enkidu warned Gilgamesh not to trust Humbaba, and that it would be foolish to let such a powerful potential enemy survive. And so Gilgamesh and Enkidu together slew Humbaba. Thus Gilgamesh began to establish his legend. Ishtar, the goddess of love and war, was so impressed that she decided to propose marriage to Gilgamesh. But Enlil and many other gods were angry that Enlil's servant had been murdered, especially over something so frivolous as fame. These events would lead to the battle of Enkidu and Gilgamesh against the Bull of Heaven, which you can hear about in our episode on Taurus. In the classical Greek canon, Leo represents the Nemean lion. This was an immense lion with a hide that was impervious to any weapon. It would capture young women, and when warriors came to rescue them, they would be killed and eaten by the lion. It took no less than Heracles to defeat the Nemean lion. Heracles was tasked with slaying the lion as the first of his famous twelve labors. Heracles was a skilled archer and first attacked the lion with arrows, but these arrows were useless against the lion's hide. So Heracles realized that he could only defeat the lion by wrestling with it. He drove the lion into its lair and cornered it. The lion slashed at him with its claws, but he was able to catch the claws and strangle the lion. On the advice of Athena, Hercules used the lion's claws to skin it, as those were the only things that could cut its hide. He then used the Nemean lion's hide as a suit of invincible armor.